strategic relationship and our cooperation on a wide range of security and economic issues. This includes efforts to bolster their military capabilities and to advance new commercial deals that would create tens of thousands of American jobs. The Emir reiterated his commitment to counter terrorist financing and violent extremism. As you may recall, just a few weeks ago, Qatar publicly designated 20 terrorist financers and six entities. This is the latest in a series of important steps, but the President and Amir agreed that there is more progress to be made. We are committed to partnering in that effort. Finally, the two leaders discussed the urgent need to resolve the Gulf dispute. The United States must be able to work jointly with the United Gulf Cooperation Council to promote regional security and stability and to stand against Iran's dangerous activities. Also, as you may have seen, the President spoke this morning with Brit British Prime Minister Theresa May. Both leaders condemned Syrian President Assad's vicious disregard for human life and agreed not to allow the use of chemical weapons to continue. To that end, the President will not attend the Summit of the Americas or travel to Colombia as originally scheduled. The Vice President will travel to the summit in his place and will meet with the Colombian President while he's there in Peru. President Trump will remain in the United States to oversee the American response to Syria and to monitor developments around the world. Looking ahead to this afternoon, the President is pleased to welcome the University of Alabama Crimson Tide football team to the White House in celebration of their 17th national championship. Pretty sure that was written by somebody from Alabama. <laughs> Coach Saban, UA President Bell, and the team captains will meet with President Trump in the Oval Office, and the group will then join the rest of the team and hundreds of Tide fans out on the South Lawn, and that event will, of course, be open to the press. And with that, I will take your questions. And because it is her birthday, Nadia, I'm going to go with you, and happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, the President authorized the use of military force uh, last year after President Assad used chemical weapons, uh, but this is, didn't seem to deter him. The President talked yesterday of a very strong and serious uh, response now. How is he going to hold President Assad accountable? I'm sorry, can you repeat the last part of the question? Hold President Assad accountable now? Uh, the President's been clear. We're working with our partners and allies and our national security team uh, to look at all options. And as we've said, all options are on the table, but I'm not going to get ahead of anything the President may or may not do uh, in response to what's taking place in Syria. John. Sir, talking about the raid on Michael Cohen's office, the President said it's an attack on our country, it's an attack on what we all stand for. In what way? Is an FBI raid on Michael Cohen's office an attack on our country? Uh, I think that the president has been clear uh, that he thinks that this has gone too far. And beyond that, I don't have anything to add, but I'd refer you back to the president's comments. Would that, would that, that accounts to an attack on our country? Uh, again, I think the president has been clear what his position is. I don't have anything else to add Does at this point. Do you believe he has the power to fire special counsel Robert Mueller? Does he believe that's within his power? Uh, I certainly believes he has the power to do so. John. Good. Uh, you have said several times from the podium that the president uh, has neither the intention nor is thinking about firing Robert Mueller. Does that remain the case today? Uh, the president was asked this question directly last night, and I'd refer you back to his comments. Can I also ask, what about Rob Rosenstein? What's the president thinking about Rosenstein in terms of his tenure at the Department of Justice? He did not appear to be very happy with him last night. And can you confirm that Rosenstein? was the high-level DOJ official that signed off on the FBI raid. Uh, I'd refer you to the Department of Justice in terms of uh, their process. Uh, certainly the President's voiced his frustrations, but beyond that I don't have anything else. Yeah. Shannon. Um, do, is the President still open to talking to uh, Mueller? Or is he still open to an interview? Uh, that's something that I would direct you to the President's uh, personal attorneys to Thank answer you. that question. I would ask about Rosenstein. What about FBI Director Ray? Uh, he was the one who signed off supposedly on this FBI raid. Does the President still have confidence in him? Again, I would refer you to the Department of Justice on the process and who did or did not sign off. That's not something that we were a part of here. President's feelings about the FBI Director? Does he have concerns about the FBI Director? The President's director? Uh, voiced his frustration with the situation. I haven't spoken with him directly about Director Ray. Jill. Two things. Just to follow up on that, has the President spoken with either Jeff Sessions or Rosenstein since the raid yesterday? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. And then I want to ask you about the decision to cancel the trip. Can you walk us through a little bit more of the decision-making there, why the President felt like he could 
couldn't make a decision, he couldn't execute on whatever he decides to do while he's traveling, considering that the uh, missile strike last year was actually launched while the president was in Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago happens to be uh, within the United States, uh, something I'm sure you're very well aware of. The president would like to stay in the country uh, while there are a lot of developments going on around the world. What does being in the country, ben how does that benefit him? Again, I'm not going to get into specifics on intel matters and things that we may or may not do, but the president and his national security team felt it was best that he stay uh, in the United States while all of these developments are taking place. Exactly. Uh, does Michael Cohen still represent the president? Uh, I'm not sure I would refer you to Michael Cohen on that. And when did the president first learn of the payment from Michael Cohen to Stormy Daniels uh, and their non-disclosure agreement? Uh, I'm not sure on the exact timing. Kristen? Sorry, I'm going to keep having, moving because oh, we're tight on time. Just, just Kristen. one more question there. If the president Sorry, Jacqueline, I'm going to keep moving. Go ahead, Kristen. Daniels, then why did Jacqueline, he instruct... I'm going to move on to Kristen. Sorry, we were tight on time with the visit of the Alabama team coming up soon. Um, Go ahead. Well, just can you follow up on that question? Does he I didn't continue to deny having an affair? Then why doesn't he just... The president's been clear. He's addressed this several times. I don't have anything else to add. Brian? Sarah, 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 let me follow just up. ask my other question. Can you just say definitively, has the president had any conversations about firing Jeff Sessions, Rod Rosenstein, or Robert Mueller in the past 24 hours? I haven't had any conversations with him on that. I can't speak beyond that at this point. Sorry, Kristen, we've got to keep going, guys. Go ahead, Ron. Witch hunt, but Rod Rosenstein, who he appointed, signed off on She's the probe. She's going to do it. Go ahead. <laughs> well, uh, I answer her. If Go ahead, Kristen. <laughs> can, you, can you just answer the question? If the president Enough. appointed Rod Rosenstein. And so how can he call the raid yesterday a witch hunt when it was approved by the deputy attorney general he appointed? Once again, I'm not aware of what the process is and who signs off on those specific uh, types of things. The president certainly has been very clear about what his position is when it comes to uh, matters of collusion, and that's what his reference is. He thinks this entire thing is a witch hunt. I think uh, we've spoken about this at length, at nauseum, and frankly think it's a big distraction uh, that the media has spent every single day for the last year focused on this instead of some of the biggest issues of our day and some of the biggest issues that the president is dealing with, like uh, Syria, like North Korea, like deregulation, tax cuts, defeating ISIS. Those are the f that's the focus of this administration, and frankly, that's what you guys should spend so a little my, bit so more time on. Hey, guys, time out. So We're Sarah, gonna take, you yielded your time no, to no, Kristen. No, I'm going to go to John. Please, if I Sorry. Just a follow-up. All right, I'll come back to you, Brian, for one. Thanks. You had said that it, I'm it feeling is a generous witch. today. Thank you. Thank for you. Nadia's birthday. <laughs> Just two quick ones. You, you said uh, that uh, it's a witch hunt, and you continue to characterize it as that. But in so much as this administration also has leveled sanctions against the 13 Russians that were indicted by the Mueller investigation, in some point, it, are you a party to this witch hunt, or, or is some of it at least a legitimate effort? Uh, just because there may have been involvement by Russia doesn't mean there was involvement by the Trump campaign. No, and no, to try to conflate the two is insane. No, 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 that's not the question. The question is, in some ways, aren't you at least supporting what they've done because they've indicted some of the people that you have leveled sanctions against? So you're in agreement with Mueller in at least some regards, right? Uh, we've been uh, outspoken on a number of occasions that we think that uh, Russia was involved in election meddling, and we've taken actions uh, because of that. But that has nothing to do with whether or not the president and his campaign had anything to do with that. I'm not – sorry, I'm going to keep moving. John – I called on John before. Guys, one at a time. Go ahead, John. Uh, thanks a lot, Sarah. Sorry, right here. Thanks a lot, Sarah. What kind is of the, crazy today. What is, the, what is the nature of the president's relationship right now with Attorney General Jeff Sessions? He really voices his pleasure with him last evening in his remarks. Is it a good relationship? Does he risk being fired right now? I think the president was pretty clear uh, about his frustrations when he spoke about that last night. Uh, Michael. One other one, real quick, Sarah, if, if you don't mind. Um, it's about uh, the EPA administrator, Mr. Pruitt. If it turns out that he lied in the interview that he gave with Fox News, my colleague Ed Henry, would that be problematic for him in terms of holding on to his job? Uh, I'm not going to get into hypothetical situations, but certainly uh, the president would expect all members of his cabinet to uh, be honest and certainly open with the public. So Michael. Syria, um, so the president last night seemed to combine his reaction to the Russia investigation, which we've heard him say before, and this new investigation that has grown out of the raids in New York of his attorney. Does he view that as one and the same investigation? In other words, does he think that's all 
kind of under the umbrella of the special counsel, or does he view the Russia investigation as separate from the probe into the payments by these women that is apparently being conducted by the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office in New York? Uh, I think certainly that uh, they are separate um, investigations, but I think that publicly they have been conflated quite a bit. Uh, Steve? Yeah. Yes, Sarah. Uh, does the United States expect that in a response to the Syria chemical uh, weapons attack that other nations will join in? Specifically, we're seeing indications from France and the Saudis that uh, they may also take military action. Uh, we've had a number of conversations, both uh, the president with uh, President Macron, Prime Minister May, and at various other levels, not just with those countries, but others at an administration level. And we're going to continue to work with a number of our partners and allies as we determine what the next best steps are. Sarah. April. Sarah. Uh, two questions. The president said yesterday he was compliant. They turned over a million documents. If he was compliant with these investigations, why was there a search warrant needed? Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with the president, and I would refer you to Michael Cohen and his attorney. Uh, when it comes to matters of the special counsel and dealings with the president, we've been fully cooperative. Okay, and our next question. With all of this turmoil, particularly this last week, has the president at any time thought about stepping down before or now? Uh, no, and I think that's an absolutely ridiculous no, question. Not, yeah. ridiculous. I gave you two questions, ridiculous. April. We're moving on. Jordan, go ahead. It's not ridiculous. Thanks, Jordan, go Thanks ahead. Sarah. Um, did the National Security Advisor John Bolton force Tom Bossert out of his job? Uh, I'm not going to get into specific uh, details about the ongoings of personnel, but I can tell you that he resigned. Uh, the president feels he's done a great job and uh, wishes him the best as he moves forward. Right, Sarah, the president uh, tweeted favorably today about some of the promises that President Xi has made toward uh, instituting some market reforms uh, in China, but he's said this before. Is this going to be enough to avert some of these tariffs that the president has been talking about instituting? Uh, certainly, we are encouraged by uh, President Xi's uh, words and his kind words. Uh, but at the same time, we want to see concrete actions from China. Uh, and we're going to continue moving forward in the process and in the negotiations until those happen. Sarah, Pamela? Sarah. Has the president spoken with Michael Cohen since the raids? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Sarah, Sarah, ask you, um, Sarah, Sarah. you said that you, he believes he views this as sort of crossing the line. Can you explain a little bit more? why these raids on his personal attorney is viewed by the president as crossing the line? Uh, I don't have anything else to add on that front right now. Right here, in the front. You said, earlier, you said the president believes he has the power to fire Robert Mueller because usually the most legal experts believe that he would have to order Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein to fire Mueller, and Rosenstein could, of course, refuse. I know a number of individuals uh, in the legal community, uh, and including at the Department of Justice, that he has the power to do so, but I don't have any further announcements on it. They've told me, I've asked, they've said that it's Rob Rosenstein oversees special counsel and only he has the power to fire the special counsel. Uh, again, we've been advised that the president uh, certainly has the power to make that decision. Um, I can't go anything Sorry, beyond that. Sir. Dave? Uh, the British government said they're still looking for confirmation that Assad used chemical weapons last weekend. Is the president still looking for confirmation of that? Uh, I can't get into specific classified information, but I can tell you we feel confident uh, in the comments that we've made up until this point. John? Thank you, Sarah. Two questions with brevity on Ambassador Bolton. <laughs> with the resignation, we'll believe it when we see it, right? With the resignations of Michael and John and now Tom Bosser, can we expect any other changes of personnel in his uh, family? Uh, I don't have any other personnel announcements to make at this time. But so we'll the other keep question, you guys posted. right? Uh, a year ago, Ambassador Bolton was highly critical in op-ed pages about U.S. involvement with the World Bank and the International Monetary <coughs> Fund. With the World Bank IMF meeting coming up within a matter of two weeks, uh, is his <coughs> position going to affect? U.S. support for either institution? Uh, I don't have any policy changes uh, on that front at this time and don't expect any on that front. Francesca? Thank you, Sarah. 
Right, yesterday, President Trump said something very interesting about Syria. He said that because of the power of the United States and because of the power of our country, we're able to stop it. Now, with bringing in Ambassador John Bolton as well, which is sort of a signal of, of a more hawkish stance potentially, I want to know if the President has changed his calculus in any way on Syria and on whether or not he wants to pull out those troops very soon, as he previously said. Uh, I address the the troops yesterday. I don't have anything new on that front in terms of things that the president may or may not do. We're not going to broadcast, and I don't have any announcements on that front. Sir, sir, uh, Fred, please. Fred. Oh, thanks, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, this week, uh, Senator McConnell said that they're taking up six nominations, uh, and that they're going to continue taking up six nominations per week. Uh, do you consider that a major breakthrough for the administration? Considering there's been uh, we'd like to so see them blocks? take on a lot more than six, but uh, we're certainly glad to see those six move forward. But we'd like to see them uh, move forward in a much bigger fashion uh, than just the single digits right now. And, and, and one other question uh, on U.S. Attorney Berman, uh, he's in an interim position now in New York. Uh, the reports have been that the president was going to nominate him for full time. Is that still the case? Will the president nominate him? I don't have any personnel announcements on that front. So you're Thanks, Sarah. So all of the evidence so far in the Syrian chemical attack points to the use of chlorine gas. The Assad regime has been suspected of using chlorine multiple times on the battlefield. What makes this particular attack different and warrant the international response and the potential use of lethal force that we're seeing from this president? Uh, I can't address specific intelligence matters, but I think everyone around the world can see why these recent attacks are so horrific. Uh, beyond that, I can't get into any other details. Sarah, Sarah, Amen. Sarah. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. To clarify your, your comment here on Xi Jinping's speech last night, it was seen as uh, rhetoric around trade openness. And are you saying that the president didn't see anything in that speech? that would encourage him to back off on his threat to impose tariffs on the Chinese? We certainly think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, and we're encouraged by the words, but we want to see concrete steps and concrete action by the Chinese. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to continue moving forward. What specific actions do you want to see from the Chinese? What could they do here to stave off those tariffs? At this, point? this is going to be something that's part of private negotiations that we have with the Chinese, but certainly we want to see more than just the rhetoric, but we think that's a, a very good sign in moving in the right direction. Sarah, we got time for one last Sarah, question, I'll Blake. And, and to, to pick up, and, and I guess <laughs> I missed that. I, don't know. Uh, I didn't hear it. So yeah, I think they were saying they thought you were great. I'm pretty sure uh, that was it. To, uh, to pick up and end off where, where Eamon just uh, what, what he was just talking about. You said you want to see concrete actions uh, from the Chinese as it relates to trade. Do you feel that there will actually be at some point concrete actions, or is all of this right now hope and talk? And, and uh, we make uh, again, we certainly hope so. We think this is an encouraging step in the right direction, but at the same time, um, we're going to continue moving forward in the actions that the president has announced, and um, hopeful that we see something come out of the Chinese government. It feels almost today like it's been somewhat of a lukewarm reception. Is, it, is that accurate? No. Uh, as the president himself said, he appreciates President Xi's kind words, but we want to see more than just words. We want to see action, um, and that's what we're focused on pushing forward, is making sure that we stop the unfair trade practices. That's been what the president's committed to, not just rhetoric, but actual action. One more, one more, one more. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you guys out on the South Lawn as we welcome the Crimson Tide.